that was a uh, uh, handball, uh, you know, uh, very interesting there indeed in terms of just uh, getting one or two ideas from uh, a sporting point of view in your Know Your Sport segment. We come back uh, to the studio and uh, as the netball team exits, uh, we are joined by another team in studio. Let me just uh, paint the picture with a preamble of uh, the team that is here with us in studio because uh, power used to be along Ngong Road. That's in rugby. Then power shifted to Thicker Road, along uh, Thicker Road with KCB. At the moment, power is sitting in Western Kenya with Cabras Sugar. There are those who are believing that slowly, day in, day out, power will be coming back to Nairobi. The question is, will it be along Thicker Road or Ngong Road? We are joined by one of the teams that uh, has always been a force to reckon with when it comes to matters of rugby along Gong Road. For two years, they've been in the championships. They've come back. First major tournament has been the Impala Floodlight uh, Tournament, the Impala Floodies. They had a target of making it to the semifinals and to the finals. That was their target. Anything beyond the final or beyond the semis was always going to be a bonus. They got to the final. Despite losing, some of the loyal fans said they are not having their heads down. They have their heads up because what the team has shown is uh, very, very good. To quote one of the fans, they said, we may not have won the cup, but under Fade, we acknowledge something more precious, and that is our belief has come back. We are talking about Impala Rugby club with us in studio. Let me take the opportunity to introduce who is uh, with us in studio so that you can get to know who is here and also we find out from them what has been the journey back to Kenya Cup because this is a step towards Kenya Cup. To my farthest left uh, we are joined by uh, Brian Ocheng who is a prop with the team. Yobos. Yes. Karibu sana. Thank you for the invite. Karibu sana, Brian. Yeah. We'll talk about why you're not strong on malls. <laughs> Nanaona mekula mkashiba. <laughs> That's talk for another time later yeah. on. To my immediate uh, left, we are joined by Derek uh, Kinyan, also with us uh, in studio, a center, uh, you know, and also a wing with uh, Impala Rugby. Yeah. Derek, karibu sana. Thank you so much. Karibu and Karibu. nice to have you in studio as well. Thank you. I'll cross to my right where we are joined by one man uh, who anything he touches turns to gold uh, in terms of uh, bringing up young upcoming uh, players. Uh, he's been out there, uh, was a force to reckon with, uh, was the man behind the success that uh, we saw with Strathmore Leos. He <laughs> has crossed over now uh, to Impala. And believe you me, the belief that is in Impala at the moment, the power, the, 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 I mean, the ability that the team is now uh, you know, showcasing is ability that uh, many are clearly saying that power is uh, shifting back to Nairobi and many could be seeing power shift uh, along Angong Road because uh, they've done what the team has not done in the past six years and the team has been out in the championships. Their first major championship and uh, their, their first major tournament, they've sent a warning. We are talking about Luis Kizia, popularly called as Fade. We'll find out where the Fade name came from, but later on. Luis Kizia, Karibu sana. Asante, thank you for having me and thank you for the compliments. No, Karibu sana. Mgala muwe hakiake mpe. They say in Swahili. Very true. Why do they call you Fade? <laughs> Fade is a long story. Uh, Growing up and uh, when I started my rugby way back uh, in Mwamba, I was a young boy who could easily relate with everyone, from the seniors to the juniors. So guys used to nick, nick, nickname me boys, Mtuawatu. So it was boys, boys, boys. And uh, over the years, as years passed, I, I, grew, I grew and became a bit uh, one of the seniors in the team. So in came the young Turks who could no longer call me boys. And uh, they brought in the name Fade. They said, because uh, I, I was always around and I've always been around in regards to when my seniors used to travel. I used to have, have played for Mwamba all games for the last 17 years since I joined. So this young Turks decided to brand me Fade because I was always there for them. So the name Fade stuck. Well, we'll talk about, uh, you know, uh, more about that. But let me cross over to Derek. Derek, yes. Fade played for Impala, Kulabu you know, uh, for many years, and that was his club. Apparently, 
in the tournament, uh, the Fladis, you had to start with Impala, and you had no mercy for his former club. <laughs> well, we were playing his former team, that is Mwamba, sorry. It's Mwamba, and uh, I think we, we were going to that game just to, to do whatever he told us. He told us to go and believe, and whatever he taught us, he taught us is what we are going to do. So we were going there to implement whatever he has taught us. So we were not looking at it from the points that he played with. He played for them in the past. Wow, uh, interesting because when you look at how you played against Mwamba, uh, it's like you knew them in and out. Uh, uh, I mean, Brian, did he tell you the weaknesses that uh, Mwamba had? Uh, and you decided that those are going to be your strong points so that you get the maximum out of Mamba? Uh, well, uh, I say it was like a bonus for us because we had to do it first of all for Fad and also for us. We just, we wanted to win that game so bad. Yeah. As we look at uh, uh, how the tournament panned out, uh, uh, Kisia, it looks like you've decided as a team that any time you want to go into anything, you must have a target. You must know what you're chasing. Your target going into Fladis was to just be among the last four, and anything beyond that was always going to be a bonus. When you got to the semis and you're playing against the perennial uh, rivals, uh, you know, known this in, uh, in uh, you know, Ngong Road Derby, yeah. how did you inspire the boys by telling them that, guys, we're already in the semis? But this is a derby, and you know how derbies can behave. 9-6 it was in favor of uh, Impala. Impala. Yeah, I think, uh, like is in life, you have to set realistic targets. And uh, I think us guys, when I went to Impala, I started there on the 1st of September this year. I, I looked at the profile of the players that we have, and uh, the players that we uh, recruited, and I saw, saw it fit that uh, to set the target of making it to the last four was, was achievable. Because the sessions we'd had for the first two weeks, I could see they were hungry, they were talented, they were eager to learn, they had a coachable attitude, and more so we had senior players who really understood the game. They, were just, they, they just lack, lacked uh, leadership. So setting it as uh, to, to make it to the last four was, 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 was not as tough as people might think. Uh, going to the games, I think the boys bought into their plans. Yes, playing against uh, Kulabu, my, my, my childhood club. I wouldn't say that uh, we will take anything from Mwamba because they're also on a rebuilding phase. But uh, the boys, as uh, Derek puts it, stuck to the plan. We did our analysis because we are very big on analysis, video analysis. So we got Mamba's videos, uh, looked at them, looked at their weaknesses, looked at their strengths, and uh, the boys, the boys uh, stuck to the plan. And the result was, uh, was a win in our favor. Uh, the game against Nondis, of course, a derby is a derby. 3-0, 6-0, that's what derbies are meant for. And uh, I remember that Thursday night when we named the squad heading into the derby, I, I told the boys, uh, we are about, we are almost hitting the target that we set for, for this year. So your role today is just to bring home the win. We always big on looking at performance rather than the outcome, but for this derby tournament, not only remember the performance, whether you played mediocre, whether you played scrappy rugby, or you played well, everybody will always remember the outcome. So I told them, because it's a derby, today we'll throw our books out and uh, look at the outcome. So ensure we get a win, go to the pavilion and celebrate. And for sure the boys gave the win. 9-6, uh, you'll remember, even you, you, can, you can always remember that Impala are the new kings of, of Gongo. <laughs> the Swahili say, Kila Mwambangomo Vutio Pandewake, because when I had Queens here, uh, you know, a couple of uh, weeks back after uh, the Safari 7, no, not Safari, but uh, the 7th circuit. Uh, yeah. uh, they were also very, very passionate, and they say the power is shifting to Ngong Road, and it's shifting towards Queens. <laughs> they are also on a rebuilding phase, but anyway, that's talk for another day when we get, uh, uh, you know, to the Kem Kenya Cup proper. But, uh, Derek, yes. it is so clear that Derby can go either way, like uh, uh, Father puts it here, that uh, go out there, mm -hmm. what will matter by the end of the day is the result, not the performance. Yeah. Did you decide as a playing unit once you're out there that, guys, he result Lazima Ije through thick and thin? Yeah, sure. Like he said, uh, 
before we get we got into that match, we were like so ready. We knew it's Nondis and uh, it's always a battle. It's always a rival. So it always comes down to the to the small margins. It's a game of small margins. Mm -hmm. So we, we wanted to have everything perfectly done. So going on to that match, we knew what they were going to bring and we knew they were going to come in hard because they wanted, they also want the bragging rights for Ngong Road. Yeah. And that is what we gave them. Yeah. <laughs> and not for the first time. Not for the first, time. For the first time. History was repeating <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> <Sure. laughs> That's a good one. Uh, I mean, uh, Brian, yes. one key thing that uh, was so evident in the final against uh, Menengai Oilers that you lost uh, by a big margin, that's 42 points to three, was that uh, you guys were overpowered in the malls. You were very poor in the malls. And as a prop, a lot is expected of you, your boss. What, yes. what was the key thing in, uh, you know, uh, Oilers carrying the day? Uh, I think... I think we knew what they will do and what they will bring at us, but uh, uh, I think the boys didn't step up the way we tended to. But uh, they 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 won that day. But uh, we are focused and we are training, and I think come the league, we'll we'll be together as a team and we'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because coach. The malls was, uh, was, was one of your main undoings, but also the concussions, uh, you know, uh, that uh, came in uh, very unfortunate for you, uh, losing two players. Uh, one of them, your fly half, that's uh, Amatoka, uh, very unfortunate indeed. Uh, what would you attribute uh, the loss to, uh, you know, in terms of losing, uh, you know, by that wide uh, margin? Well, I think, first of all, I'll, I'll give it to Oilers. Uh, they they studied, uh, studied as well. Uh, they didn't uh, leave any room for us to enjoy a place. I think uh, from, their, from their analysis, they knew we had uh, superior backs. Uh, the reason why they brought in back rows to play in their midfield. And uh, their forwards were dominant. They dominated the set pieces from the scrums, the lineouts. And you know, 15th rugby, without, without the ball, there's nothing can execute. We might have New Zealand backs, but if you can't get the ball, the ball to them, then there's nothing that we're going to, we're going to do. So for that weekend, I think our forwards, I would say they, they let us down. But uh, I'm glad that it was a baptism by fire early in the season, early in the tournament. Uh, it opened our eyes to just show us uh, who needs to play where. Because remember, our second team side was also playing on the other side at uh, RFEA grounds. So at times, you know, in training, players might lie to you because probably I'm still new. I'm, try I'm still trying to make the team, uh, the, final t the final team. So play a player might lie to you in training is so good, he does his tackles, he's good in the lineouts, he's good in ball carrying. But when it comes to D-Day where people don't know him, he shatters or just jitters. So it was, it was an eye-opener for us. Uh, despite Oilers having, having, having played in the top flight the last, uh, since 2016, uh, there have been Kenya Cup finalists in the past, in the, at least I think in 2021. So they have experienced players playing the, in the national team for the Simbas. So that, that in turn uh, took, took a turn and uh, it was impossible for my young, time, for my young side to, to, match, to match what they brought. But as, as Yobos puts it, yes, it was a learning phase. We keep on working. We know Kenya Cup is around 10 games, uh, a game at a time, as we always do it. Uh, I've, I've done it in the past. Mine is always a game at a time. We pick our lessons and move to the next stage. For us, we are not in a hurry. This is our first year. Uh, most, most people would tell us they want us to fight for survival but again, we've set our targets to make it to the playoffs. So it means that we have to keep on training and practicing and ensure that by the time we play Kenya Cup, definitely we'll win some and we'll lose some. We'll take the lessons and uh, come back every, every, each and every other time rejuvenated and ready to take, to take the mantle. I know the message to the boys in the dressing room, or the boys must have been saying that, uh, you know, after that uh, a loss to Oilers, the message must have been, we will be back. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> we will be back. Uh, people should watch this space. It might take a year or two, but we will be back. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll surprise a, a big horse very soon. Wow. Yes. And as we look at this still with you, Faze, one main problem, uh, I don't know whether I would call it a problem or a challenge to most Kenyan teams, 
uh, is getting fly hubs who can get you that extra point uh, with the boot. It's a challenge to many uh, you know, teams in the country. What's our conversion rate like uh, from the boot? And are you happy or it's an area that you really feel needs improvement? Well, it's an area that really needs improvement. And uh, what most uh, players or people forget is kicking is not, is not, is not inborn. It's something you have to train. You have to practice. Always say practice makes perfect. If you want to be successful in everything, you have to prepare for it. So most kickers assume that uh, because they kicked, uh, they, were, they were good kickers probably playing back in high school, it's the same here in club. It, it takes a toll on you when you're playing rugby. Probably you're a fly off. You, you need to kick for touch. You need to kick for post. You need to do the kickoffs. Give, you need to kick the up and unders. So it takes, it takes a toll on your, on, your, on your muscles. So if you're not accustomed to, to eat, then it will be a problem when, uh, when you're required to do it. Uh, it's definitely a challenge. Uh, most of our kickers kick shallow uh, as compared to uh, the internationals who kick uh, far, long and wide. Uh, a good example and a good kicker that currently is in Kenya is uh, Dukisa from Cabras. The boy, has a, the boy has a big boot. Kicks from whatever angle, he'll always give you touch. If he's going for points, he'll always give you points. Uh, Matoka Matoka, as you mentioned, is, is, is a young lad who's played for the Simbas, uh, went through the system through the Chipu, the under-20 side, has a big boot, but for, for instance, the week, the week towards the Nundis game, uh, he only did one session, he was committed somewhere else, he came for the third, third session late, he didn't do his kicks, reason why we ended up uh, missing seven kicking ball points. Uh, the score against Nundis will have ended uh, 30, 36 in our favour. But unfortunately, we missed that. And remember, in the league, those are, are, are mistakes that will be punished. You miss a kick, they get it, they punish you. So playing against these big sides who have uh, more experience uh, becomes even difficult when your kicker is not uh, at 100%. So yes, we, we are lacking in terms of kicking. And uh, the boys should know that it's all about training and practice. Don't assume. Because you played a game and kicked well, it wouldn't be that, that with the whole weekend. You have to do it over and over again. Your body becomes accustomed to it. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes it's perfect. It's never by default. Yes. Wow. Derek, yes. Uh, you know, one strong point, because I've watched some of your games, one of your strongest points is defensively. You are very strong uh, from your defense, and you really build, uh, you know, from the same going forward. Uh, how do you think this will help you in terms of going into Kenya Cup? Well, uh, first of all, I love to give credit to Fade. He's done a lot of work. When it's, it's, it's not just showing. There is a lot of work happening in the background. So I know defense will win you games, and uh, that is where he has started. And uh, moving forward, we want to fine tune so that we, in, in as much as we, at, we defend, we also attack. Uh, as we do that, uh, another key important uh, session will be the gym session. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, yes, yes. They say no pain, no gain. But more pain, more gain. Yeah. Talk about the gym sessions. Chuma. Yeah, Chuma. I, I think uh, a, lot, a lot of the boys are really putting it on the gym. Mm. Yeah, because uh, rugby is a contest sport. At the end of the day, you must... You must give it. You must. You must. You must even. You, you must go to the gym, try and build up some strength. So um, on our on our side, uh, we are really we are really putting in the work even uh, even in the gym, because uh, we want to do more in attack and in, in in attack in defense. Uh, we want we want to we want to put our bodies in the line. So also we have to protect our bodies. We have, we have to eat the gym, and build up from there. On a light note, yeah. Ugali Managu. I wish. I wish. I wish. I wish. It has to be Ugali what? Nyama. Nyama. <laughs> ugali Nyama. Nyama. Yeah. There is so clear about that. <laughs> ugali Managu, I wish. I wish. I wish. Ugali Daga. Daga. Ugali. <laughs> beef. Yeah. Proper beef. Proper beef. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you have a team that also looks at diet and also talks to them on the right things to do, uh, Father. Uh, currently, again, uh, getting a nutritionist is not easy. Mm -hmm. uh, Kenya is all about money. Uh, somebody has gone to the university to study nutritionist, 
nutrition for the last four years. Of course, uh, they, they expect uh, some bit of remuneration into it. So for us, I think by, by virtue of me being the national team, I, I also learn a lot from, from the other lads, from the other coaches who are there. And I, this trickles down to the club in regards to the diet, uh, game day diet, uh, training diet. So it's, it's something I just share with the boys and uh, advise them, uh, dependent on what uh, weight we're looking for. For the props, we want heavy boys, 110 kgs. So we advise so not, or not to eat what will help you add weight. Uh, if you are sent and you are overweight, you advise or not to cut on and uh, give you the, the proper exercises that will ensure you, you are at par and uh, ready to, to, to play for your position. Uh, I mean, it's interesting because when you look at uh, the different uh, attributes that uh, will, by the end of the day, deliver results, uh, uh, diet is critical, uh, you know, uh, uh, gym work is very critical. But, uh, Father, you've been with this team now for two months, uh, and it looks like the chemistry is coming in. Uh, you know, you can see the different player combinations that you're trying to work out on because uh, in every game that I've watched, you will realize that one or two player swaps, yeah. uh, you know, uh, in terms of building up to Kenya Cup. Uh, also seeing that Leon Onduso, uh, for example, named, uh, you know, most promising player, uh, clearly tells you that something is happening in this team. What is it that you've brought into the Impala team that's making them tick? Well, I, I think, again, it always boils down to the culture that you want, the culture and the ethos that you want to have in your team. Uh, the season plan is uh, but a guide. As I always say, it's not cast on stone. And uh, it's something that we have our team meeting and agree on. We agree on uh, the achievables and the objectives that we want to achieve in a given season. If they are too high or too much, the boys will always say, and I always tell them, before I'm your coach, I'm your big brother. So don't give me that coach approach that you can't ask me anything. I want to be your big brother who will guide you to the best, uh, to, the, to the highest level. Uh, I think their attitude, it, it really matters. A coachable attitude is, uh, is key to any coach. When, when I get into Impala in the evening and I find my boys uh, with the SNC already activating, ready, uh, just waiting for me, it really encourages me. When uh, I give them a game plan and uh, how to play, they, go to the field, they take the field and execute exactly what uh, we've been doing. It encourages me again to even do more. Because I'm saying, if I give them, I'm giving them a, this simple task and they're executing, uh, I, I, I'm, I don't need to shy away or to limit what I'm giving them. Let me give them all the, the knowledge that I have for them to execute. Yes. Uh, let's look at another angle to it. And uh, Derek, yes. from what I'm picking from Father, he's uh, developed a mentality that uh, never fear me, but respect me. Sure. Which means if you don't fear me, you can talk to me, you can tell me anything yeah. uh, in, the, in the pitch. Which means uh, it's never a one-way kind of communication, but you both talk sure. uh, when uh, reviewing tapes, like he mentioned earlier on, when uh, discussing any situation in a game. Mm -hmm. What's your mantra? Because I'm told it's something to do with learn. Well, uh, I think rugby being a gentleman sport is about building each other in and out of the field. So when Father came in, he, he set his target, he gave us our mantra that on the season we are supposed to learn and learn and then relearn. So we are supposed to learn new things, relearn the things that we, we need to do and then unlearn the bad, the bad behaviors and the bad things that we, 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 we did initially. So I think it's about him being approachable. He is very approach, approachable and uh, we find it so easy to learn from him. And uh, I think we're headed to the right direction. Yes, under him. Brian. Yes. Right direction it is, Kenya Cup awaits. Is power coming back to Ngongro? Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Moso Impala. Uh -huh. yeah. oh, to be precise. Impala. Yeah, right. Impala. Impala. Yeah. yeah. The boys are putting in the work. Uh, I feel that they believe and I feel like this season is different. We have, be pr we have prepared in a different way. We have been training. We have been pushing it each other. So when the time comes, we'll be there okay. uh, and we'll be counted. Thank you. We will be there. Uh, I'm looking at uh, the clock and uh, 
looking at how you're dressed tells me we are headed to Ngom Road. Simba that is Simba RFU. Simba's time. Yeah, Simba's time is almost, yes. uh, which means Kenya is taking on, uh, on, on, on Uganda in the Elgon Cup. Yeah. Quickly, thoughts about that game? Well, uh, I think the coach has tried to give everybody a chance. He's tried uh, different combinations, seeing uh, Andy Kolomolo, whom is, who's, who's accustomed to playing at the lock, playing at, at flank seven. Uh, interesting to see how that goes, because he's a tall, lanky boy. And uh, if, he, if he can manage to play at seven, then we'll, we'll have uh, sorted the issue of number seven. Uh, other players have been given opportunity in the midfield. So just uh, like Tyson Miner, former, former, uh, former flanker, who was converted while at Oilers to play in the midfield. Uh, he's moved to KCB playing in the midfield. So I think this is his first test match uh, playing at midfield. I want to see how that pans out. So I think the coach was wise enough uh, to just allow these new boys to have a run because we still have uh, the return leg next week in Uganda. Uh, okay, uh, wishing them all the best uh, uh, because we are also headed to, towards Gong Road yes. after this and I need to release you okay. uh, in good time so that you're there. As we wind up, uh, Coach, what are your targets uh, you know, for this team uh, as we go into Kenya Cup? Well, uh, I think we set our objectives. Uh, to me, I think they're very achievable. Uh, our main, main task was the Impala Flali tournament, which is our own uh, home tournament. We agreed to make it to the finals. And I think uh, now from, from, from the list, we can tick that box. We won't put an X like an election, but we'll tick. <laughs> Just to say, to achieve Done. you. Done, mm -hmm. Ambachi style. <laughs> then uh, into, the, into, the, into the Kenya Cup uh, League. Uh, tough, long league, but uh, our, our target again is to make it to the playoffs. Remember, it's six teams making it to the playoffs. So our, our target is uh, to try and ensure that we are within reach of making it to the playoffs. Uh, both the uh, Kenya Cup and the uh, Eric Shali Shield, the team too. Uh, in the Enterprise Cup, our uh, main target, because it's a knockout tournament, want to make it to the semis. Uh, funny enough, we, the draw was done, and our first game in the Enterprise Cup, the first quarter knockout, again, we play Nondis, <laughs> away at, 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 at Jamuri Park. Then uh, I think our last target for the season, because we're in the 15th era at the moment, we haven't uh, gone into sevens, we want to push at least, um, have a minimum of eight players uh, playing for the Simbas on merit, not on uh, names, but we want to have it on merit. So it's up to the, up to, up to the boys just to work hard and ensure that uh, when, when selection is being done, they can be counted. I mean, you've set yourself uh, targets that are achievable. Uh, some of them, like you rightly put it, done, tick, uh, you know, which clearly means that uh, it can be done. From a playing point of view, what can you promise your fans? Uh, I just want to promise them that uh, let them come, continue supporting us. Impala is on the rise, and uh, we're going to make them proud. You yes. will make them proud. Brian? Yeah, same to me. I'll encourage the fans to come support us. Yes, and we'll make them proud. Wow. Father, fans seem to have also started believing like the playing unit. Uh, you know, just quoted one of the fans, we may not have won the cup, but under Fade, we reclaimed something more precious, which was our belief, which means that uh, the fans have also started coming in. What can you assure the fans as we, you know, wrap up this discussion? Well, I think, as I always tell the boys, that uh, success brews success. So if you prepare well and you start performing, everybody, wants, everybody always wants to be involved with uh, uh, success. So fans will always come. Uh, if we are playing well, no one wants to be associated with number two or three, but everybody always wants to be associated with number one. So if, if you keep on grinding and playing well and uh, winning our games, then uh, fans will definitely come. Mine is just to encourage them that uh, uh, we really need you, really need your support, uh, especially our first Kenya Cup game. We are traveling away to the champions in the forest, always <laughs> tough playing in the forest. But I'm happy it's the first game of the season. As my boys put it, that uh, Chesco, before she came momentum, to go to Mukule, to Kule, to come out to the song. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which is positive. Uh, I'm happy that they, that they know at, uh, that the, at the forest is not easy. So, yes, we get, uh, <laughs> we get, the, we get the, the, the forest boys before they get into their momentum. 
we get our school and uh, come back to Nairobi and now plan ahead. That's a good one. Before yes. they get their Before, momentum. Yes, yes. <laughs> I've never known what it is with Cabras and Mvua, but <laughs> anyway, they are a different team. Oh, I'm going to be a condition. <laughs> when you <laughs> <laughs> any weather. Thank you very much. Yes. Gentlemen, it is Simba's time. Yes, Simba's time. And I need to respect your time. I Asante. need to release you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much for having made time to be with us this afternoon. Thank, Thank you, you, Brian, Derek. Wishing you all the best as you go to the gym. Na diet ugali man ugali nyama ugali it's always a pleasure uh, talking to you, uh, you i mean wishing you guys all the best you set yourself achievable targets and uh, sky is not the limit but the stepping stone to greater heights Amen. thank you so much. go for thank it you. so up next we are going into the prodigy section then after that when we come back we'll be wrapping up but for the rest they're off to ngong road and we'll be joining them shortly <laughs>